Hello there. My name is Curtis Cunningham. I am 24 years old from Vancouver Island, Canada, and this is my audition for the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. The first question that is always asked is, why do you want to be an actor? And the answer for me is actually a lot harder to put into words than I thought it would be. But I've always had an absolute fascination and appreciation for most things involving the art, whether that is television, stage productions, film, anything like that. I've always been fascinated about the works behind the scenes, whether that's stage productions, uh, editing, screenwriting, all those kinds of things. But I've always found myself drawn to the actors and the stories that they express. And for me, that's one of the biggest things uh, to be an actor is to make someone feel like they are part of the story that you are telling and that's something that I certainly hope to do uh, as I continue acting. Uh, the experience that I have had is back in junior high, which is grade 7 to 9, I got to be part of what we called the MTV panel. It was a little parody skit that all the drama kids put on where we chose uh, characters from our favorite MTV shows. We had to then portray them, act like them, dress like them while being asked uh, certain questions in front of the school. And it was a lot of fun because that was my first time to actually be someone else, to, to have to study someone, learn their movements, learn their phrases. Um, and that really kind of was the spark that got this whole thing going. I just found myself to be very, very involved with that, very dedicated to that, and that is something that I have always just continued since then. After that, we jumped to high school. The first, I guess, legitimate production I did was a play called Eat, It's Not All About Food, which follows the story of kids with eating disorders. Now, this was the first time where I was given a character and I had to learn their lines. I had to then, of course, dress like them, but it was my first chance to kind of take a character and almost make it my own. Uh, whereas uh, in the other one, I was portraying somebody that people had already known. And that was just the next step for me. That's where I just kept hitting my stride. I was so dedicated and devoted to that. And I just knew that this was something that I needed to keep pursuing. After high school, I took a bit of a break, focused on my grades and wanted to see the world a little bit. I then found myself with a job with the YMCA, which had a bit of theater involved with it. The cool thing about that was the theater was mainly focused on body language. So the way we would do it is we would have a narrator that would tell the story and then us, the actors in our costumes, would then have to portray the story that was being told without speaking. And that was a bit of a challenge for me because I was trying to express myself without using words. But I took that challenge head on and I found it very intriguing to see how it could be done, to how to follow the story without using words and have people still feel that they are a part of it. My first monologue I'll be doing will be from Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare and I will be playing the role of Mark Antony. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I've come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously hath Caesar answered it. He, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man. So they are all, all honorable men. Come I to speak at Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought home many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms to the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When the poor hath cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. 
You all did see at the Lubricall, I thrice presented him a kingly crown, to which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure he is an honorable man. I am not here to disprove what Brutus spoke, but I am here to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause hold you to mourn for him? Thou judgment art felt on brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Forgive me, but my heart is in that coffin there with Caesar. I must pause until it come back to me. My second monologue is from American Buffalo by David Mamet, and I'll be playing the role of Teach. Fucking Ruthie. Fucking Ruthie. Fucking Ruthie. I come into the Riverside to get a cup of coffee, right? I sit down at the table with Grace and Ruthie. I'm just gonna order a cup of coffee. Grace and Ruthie having their breakfast, but they're done. Plates, crust all over. So we'll shoot the shit, talk about the game, so on. Down I sit, hi, hi. I take a piece of toast off Gracie's plate. She looks at me and goes, help yourself. Help myself. Yeah, I should help myself to half a piece of toast. It's four slices for a quarter. I should have a nickel every time we're over at the game. I pop for coffee, cigarettes, a sweet roll. Never say a word. Hey, Bobby, see who want what? Huh? A fucking roast beef sandwich. Am I right? Ah, shit. So we're sitting down, and how often do I pick up the check? But no, because I never go and make a big thing of it. It's no big deal and flaunt it like, oh, this one's on me, like some bust out asshole. But I naturally assume that I'm with friends, and don't forget who's who when someone gets behind a half a yard. I need some help with, huh? Some fucking rent, drops enormous piles of money at the track, or someone's sick or something. Only. And I tell you this, Don, only, and I'm not, I don't think, casting anything on anyone. From the mouth of a southern bull dyke asshole ingrate of a vicious nowhere cunt can this trash come. And I take nothing back, and I know you're close with them. I have always treated everybody more than fair, and never gone around complaining. Is this true, Don? Someone is against me, that's their problem. I can look out for myself. I'm gonna fuck around behind someone's back. I don't like the way they're treating me, or pray some prick safe falls and hits him on the head while he's walking down the street. But to have that shithead turn around in one breath every fucking sweet roll I've ever had with them in the ground glass, I'm wondering where they're eating them. I'm thinking this guy's gotta be an idiot to drop a fucking quarter on his friends like that. No, I'm sorry, Don, this hurts me. Okay? This hurts me in a way I, I don't know what the fuck to do. 